God of Glory Part 3 and the final in this little series. It's one thing to acknowledge God's glorious nature and to say he deserves glory. But it's a completely different matter to live for the purpose of glorifying God with your life. Through him, Jesus, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God, Romans 5 verse 2. While salvation may have been out of our hands, our response to Jesus' grace is intended to produce joy, hope and glory in God. Salvation is not primarily for or about us. It's for and about the glory of God through Jesus Christ in us. This gospel fact dramatically changes the trajectory of our lives. Our salvation was not foremost for our pleasure or our glory, but for God's. Our capacity and desire to glorify God only exists because the Holy Spirit operates within us to awaken and enable us to grow in Christ-like character, which expresses God's glory. Our desire should manifest Paul's prayer in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 to 21. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, according to the power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. God's power works within his church to accomplish far more than we believers ever thought possible throughout every generation of Christian for God's glory. This fact is not open for negotiation and it will never be compromised by God who is the one doing his work. We may not always enjoy God's sanctifying methods to fulfill his will in the matter of glory, but we are to submit to the Lord with contented obedience. King Nebuchadnezzar learned this lesson the hard way, as have many of us. The king really did think life was all about himself. He made a point of letting everyone know that everything was for his glory and others need to get on board with his self-exalting mission. Nebuchadnezzar said, Is not this great Babylon which I have built by my mighty power as a royal residence and for the glory of my majesty? Daniel 4 verse 30. Fortunately for Nebuchadnezzar, the Lord's grace was willing to send the king to glory school for a few sessions in humility. Like many of us, Nebuchadnezzar was not the fastest learner, and it required seven years of the strictest education before the student complied. However, we praise God for his seven years of persevering tuition with Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from among men and ate grass like an ox, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hair grew as long as eagle feathers, and his nails were like bird's claws. Daniel 4.33 God's mercy was willing to employ such extreme measures to save this self-righteous sinner. Only a loving God would do such a thing. Concluding seven years of continuous hum humiliation, God produced within the king the most spectacular confession praising his tutor. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honour the king of heaven, for all his works are right and his ways are just, and those who walk in pride he is able to humble. Daniel 4.37 As our Christian character is daily challenged in this matter, may we learn faster and easier than Nebuchadnezzar. Be encouraged. God's divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. 2 Peter 1.3 May the joy of such a rich calling inspire us to live for God's glory.